All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm actually doing a RSX fuel pump return. Um, I'm converting the returnless fuel pump housing for the RSX into a return system. So stock the return list. We're making it to return system. So I actually have an opportunity to uh, show you guys a you know make you guys a new video. Uh, this is really unexpected. So sorry if it's a little uh, weird. But all right. So I have the whole fuel pump housing disassembled. Okay, guys. So. This is the new fuel pump he wants to put in, AM. And these are basically the only two pieces you need to make this into a return system. Plus, we have to do one more other thing, which is right here. We need to disable the stock uh, fuel pressure regulator, okay? You must disable this. All right, so I am going to start, hmm, I'm going to get this pump, I'm going to put the pump together just to get this out of the way. Once it's um, put together, I'm going to start most likely drilling. I'm going to show you in a second, but we're going to start drilling a hole for the bulkhead for the return. This is the return right here. Okay. And then we're going to use an EFI fitting for the feed right here. Okay. We just got to take this piece off. We already have one on this one. So with that EFI fitting, basically, you can run a dash six all the way to your fuel rail and then with this, the bulkhead, you can make a return. Most people, what they do is they gut this whole thing out. Honestly, Honda and Acura did a good job with this whole setup. Um, there's no need to gut this out. Make the job even harder for yourself, honestly. Um, if you could do that, you have to run a fuel filter setup and all that stuff. If your, your whole goal is around 700 horsepower or less, or around 650 to 700 around there, you're going to be fine with the way I'm about to show you guys how to do it. All right, so I'm just going to get this done, and I'm going to show you how to put the, where to drill for the bulkhead and how to get that done, okay? So here's a clip of the bulkhead. All right, be right back, guys. All right, so here's the next part that I'm gonna work on first. All right, so I'm gonna move this to the top. You see this right here? There's nothing in there. You see that little hole right there next to my thumb? Right there is the, a good area to put your bulkhead. Start with a small drill bit, work your way up. You want to measure the diameter, the diameter in the fitting, um, just enough so it can sit snug. And you should have, I have a washer for this. Uh, the customer didn't supply a washer, but I have the correct washer for this. You also want to have a washer um, in there. You want to prevent leaks. I'm going to draw, I'm going to show you what the hole looks like. And uh, we'll be right back, okay, guys? It's super simple. But this is how you're basically going to turn a returnless system in O2, O2 to 06 RSX or the EP3s, EM2s, those kind of chassis into a return system, like the pump housing. So, all right, guys, so once you drill through, it's gonna take a razor blade and cut off the excess part that's left on the top. I'm gonna cut it off, and then I'll show you in a few, but this should be able to slide in. If it doesn't slide in all the way, just drill it out just a little bit more, but it should be able to slide in. So it's gonna get that done, show you what it looks like. I'm gonna start getting that fitting, that, that fitting in to show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys, so as you see, the hole is drilled. You make sure you got to clean it out. You need two washers actually. You need one washer on this side and then when you put it in, um, then before you put the locking nut, you need a washer on that side. Um, that's what's going to create the seal. People say, oh, just use Honda Bond and stuff like that. Guys, you don't want any of the stuff to fail. Just use double a washer on this side, wash on the opposite side, and then you'll be set. Um, yeah, so this is already drilled to a snug fit. It's almost like a slight thread as well which is nice, so if you guys want to know which, I used a half inch drill bit. Um, if you go half inch all the way through, it's going to be really tight, but then you just go and kind of hit the edges a little bit, widen up just a bit, and you'll be set. So I'm going to get this snugged up with the nut and another washer in there, and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Make sure you guys clean in the inside. It should not be dirty. Um, but yeah, that's going to be your return. And then next thing, we're going to show you how to do the feed. And then disabling the the stock fuel pressure regulator, okay? All right, guys. As you guys can see, the nut is in there. There's also another washer in there. And then on the top, there's, another, there's a washer in the fitting. Um, point it up. Point it to the left. Obviously, you can't point it to the right or down. Um, I'm going to have this one pointing up. And then next step is you take this fitting off the feed. There you go, and when you take that feed off, take your new EFI fitting, and 
if they got the right one. Hopefully they did. What if I actually got to take this blue fitting off? One second, sorry. Try to do this with one hand. You take your new EFI fitting in, put it in just like that. And then this last piece will click in and that's your new feed. That's it. So now it's officially feed, return, the last step, disabling, disabling the stock fuel pressure regulator. So I'm gonna start removing this a little bit and then I'll uh, show you how I do it. All right, so one way you can do it is by pulling this off, this holes, you can take this whole holes off. Okay, you see how that leads to that? Pull the holes off and you cap it. Obviously you gotta get, you gotta get a cap that's rated for fuel. Um, you can always buy fuel holes um, and put a nut and nut through it. I'm sorry, a bolt through it and then clamp it down. But let's do it over here. Or you can block this off. Um, you can weld it shut. You can get a screw to put in there. Um, I'm gonna try welding it shut right now. I usually do it with a screw, but I want to see if I can uh, weld this shut and see how it looks. Um, never did it that way. I usually use a screw here. And then I'll use a fuel rated uh, Honda Bond, like a Honda, like a RTV, fuel rated RTV to cover it a little bit. And then usually never a problem. But I'm going to try welding that and see how it looks. Give that a shot. So I'll be right back and show you guys the outcome. Okay. So whatever material that is, is not weldable with a MIG. That's what I tried it with. So we are just going to screw it shut. Um... It's not a big deal. I just want to experiment with it, but yeah, we're gonna screw it shut just like I normally do, and like I said, just put a uh, fuel-rated fuel like uh, RTV on it, and you should be fine. All right, guys. But that's basically how you modify a uh, RSX fuel pump housing to be return to be, to be a return style instead of returnless. All right, guys. All right. Until next time. Peace. All right, guys. This is it. Um, blocked off the. I actually just decided to. I want to try it out. I deleted the whole uh, fuel pressure regulator. I decided to just delete the whole thing. Um, bolted this down, tied it down. I want to see. I think this was this will hold. I'm pretty sure this will. Uh, I didn't, you know, give it the old kibosh. I just tightened it to the point where it's definitely snug, and I doubt it'll, you know, come out with fuel pressure. Um, but here's the feed. Here's the return, and that's it fuel pump is inside um so whoever previously modified this fuel pump housing didn't do a, a good job at it honestly um it's just it was kind of destroyed in the inside but i got it back together the best i could and that's it but we should be set and ready to make some big power just, you know should make this setup should easily hold the tool around 700 horsepower honestly uh, anything past 700, honestly, you shouldn't. You should be running fuel cell. Uh, these those big pumps in a like really really big pumps in the RSX gas tank, you get you're gonna have fuel starvation issues after you know when you're like getting close to a quarter tank. So why risk it? Just run fuel cell. You know, save your motor. But this is it. Super easy. The the two main things other than the deleting the fuel pressure regulator, everyone does it their own way. Um, everyone finds a different way that it works for them. But this is in my opinion, the cleanest and easiest way to do a fuel return. EFI fitting, uh, bulkhead fitting, and you're good to go, honestly. And just don't forget to disable the uh, the stock fuel pressure regulator, which looks like this. Um, this is, you know, do it the way you please. Um, if it doesn't work, you'll know because you'll lose fuel pressure. You should hit fuel cut anyways, and then uh, just find a different solution. But, uh, Yep. All right. That's the end of this video. I hope this helped. But uh, yeah, just a nice little walk around. Till next time, guys. Peace.